Motherboard. The motherboard is a wide and flat circuit board, and it's the main component of the computer, where every other component gets connected. Its goal is to make the different parts of the computer communicate with each other. It's relatively cheap if compared against other components, even though it's arguably the most important one. It can be considered the heart of the computer. CPU. The CPU, also known as the central processing unit or processor, is the brain of the computer. And although it usually has very low data storage, it's really good at using it for things like complex mathematical operations, reading through massive lists, etc. It's where most of the programs are run from, and basically everything that happens in a computer goes through the CPU at some point. Hard drive. It's where all of your data is stored. So when the computer says you're running low on space, it means that your hard drive is almost full. Hard drives are good at storing a lot of data, but they're slow at accessing it, since most of them are made up of spinning disks and share their data through a small wire. For this reason, it isn't always going to be able to give the needed information to the CPU. To avoid this problem, we use the RAM. RAM. The RAM stores data, just like the hard drive, but with much less space available. The good thing about the RAM is how fast it can access information, making it useful to quickly communicate to the CPU the information that would take too long for the hard drive to access. Every time you see a loading screen in a video game, it's because the CPU is taking the needed data from the hard drive to the RAM, so it can access it much more quickly when you're playing. The RAM is connected through a long, thin stick instead of a small wire like the hard drive. One thing to remember is that you can't permanently store data on the RAM. It's a short memory system, and every time you turn off your computer, the data on it gets wiped. SSD. The solid-state drive has the same goal as the hard drive, but it's faster and more durable. It's a newer technology, and in some computers, it's used with hard drives or completely alone. It's also usually more expensive. Graphics card. To create 3D worlds from complex calculations, the computer has to do a massive amount of work, but a really difficult part comes in when it's time to show those worlds on your screen. This is where the graphics card comes in, which is basically an entire standalone computer dedicated only to showing the right things on your screen deciding which pixels need to light up and in what color. Some CPUs already come with an integrated graphics card, but they're usually less powerful than a normal single graphics card. Power supply. As the name suggests, this component takes the electricity from an outlet and puts it into the computer, making it possible to use it. It has to be powerful enough for your other components. Case. A case is simply a box of plastic where every part goes. The most popular formats are mini tower, mid tower, and full tower, depending on the size they have. The choice of the case should come after having decided the sizes of the other components to make sure that everything fits in it. Cooling system. Some areas of the computer, like the CPU and graphics card, generate a lot of heat and would fry every other component and themselves if it weren't for a cooling system. A computer can have air cooling or liquid cooling, each with its own pros and cons. Wireless card. If your computer supports Wi-Fi, which gives you access to the internet without using ethernet cables, it has a wireless card. Shout out to these guys who are the first patrons that support my channel. You can end up on this list as well. Check out the link in the description.